Okay, this is something that people have a lot of trouble with. The old covenant and the new covenant. Today, they get them mixed up. The law, the old covenant law, the outward law, was a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ until the seed would come. Jesus Christ is the Holy Seed. So this is the schoolmaster law versus the Holy Spirit seed. Now, under the law, people were still sold under sin because Lucifer brought us down into a sinful, corrupted state after the flesh. We were controlled by Satan through the flesh. And so God, he made the law with Israel. He gave it through Moses, and it was con to control the flesh until the Holy Spirit seed would come, which was Jesus Christ. And then Jesus Christ would put his seed in us, and it would give us the nature of God back in us. It's an operation of God that most people don't understand. They think by keeping the laws, the Ten Commandments, and doing good, that they're pleasing God. And that was true under the Old Covenant, but the people under the Old Covenant, they were still looking forward to the seed, which was Jesus Christ, born of the Holy Spirit. And then when he made the sacrifice, he gave up his flesh for the spirit. Adam gave up his spiritual life for the flesh life. Well, Jesus gave up his flesh life for the spiritual life to obey God and to live after the spirit. And you can see the lust in the land, which destroyed the world and all the evil. And, and so they don't have the seed of Christ in them. So the law was given until the seed would come. In other words, the law was given to control the flesh until Jesus was born of the Holy Spirit. He is the seed of God. He would come after he made the sacrifice. The seed of God would come after he made the sacrifice for our sins. And then the gift of the Holy Spirit seed. The gift and promise of God to us is the Holy Spirit. And that this is that which was spoken of by the prophets. And Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost and said this very clearly. This is that. This is what they were all looking for under the law to come to the day of the seed, the Holy Spirit seed, which sets us free from the curse of the law, which controlled us in the flesh, but we couldn't keep it. So it condemned us. The law was holy, but we were condemned because we were sold under sin. We didn't have the power to do the will of God. We had to have a new seed. God in us by the Holy Spirit so that we had the power to do the will of God and the nature to do the will of God. Under the old covenant law, people could not be saved because the law could not regenerate them from the fallen fleshly nature that Lucifer had brought them down into. The seed of Adam was corrupted by Lucifer. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of God. He has always been around, even in Genesis and before. The difference is that before Jesus, God would anoint some people with the Holy Spirit and the Spirit would come upon them for the purpose of God, but they were not regenerated yet. On the inner man, they still had the nature. Take King David, for example, who was a man after God's own heart under the old covenant law, and he was anointed by the Holy Spirit, but he was still under the curse of the law of sin and death. And when he died, he was sleeping in his graves. They call it hell or shoal, as referred to in the Bible. Now, the prophet Samuel told the witch of Endor, why do you wake me from my sleep? He was sleeping. Why was he sleeping? He was a, Samuel said he was a prophet that none of his words fell to the ground, but he was waiting for the seed to come. He had to have the seed to be resurrected. Abraham, who was the father of faith, he believed in God before the law. That's why he's the father of faith, because he believed in the living God through the spirit, which came, the law came by Moses, and many others were anointed and spoke to by the Holy Spirit and were speaking by the Holy Spirit, but they all looked forward to the seed, the Messiah, which would be their salvation. They looked forward to what we now have, and when Jesus gave his life on the cross, many of the old saints raised from the grave and went into the city testifying to many. Now we have the resurrection in Christ Jesus, and therefore we are regenerated in the inner man, the soul by the Holy Spirit that comes into our spirit where our breath of life is in our soul. That's where you feel after him. That's where you 
in him you live and move and have your being. God breathed into Adam and he became a living soul. This is what we are. This is who we are. This is what Jesus came to save. It's in our breath of life. And without the Holy Spirit and with our spirit, then we're not of God and we're not saved. We're not regenerated. And this gift from God, the Holy Spirit, he will never be taken from us unless we depart from him. The spirit used to come upon people for the purpose of God, but it did not regenerate him. Just like when God was the God of Harlan's youth, before he was filled with the Holy Spirit, the spirit was with Harlan, the spirit guided Harlan, and the spirit delivered Harlan. But Harlan was not yet regenerated, and he lived a somewhat fleshly life until he was filled with the Holy Spirit, which completely changed him and his nature. He was then a new creature, and that's when we become a new creature, when we have the spirit in our soul. Now our flesh is not regenerated. It will still be the animal fleshly nature. You have to treat it like you would, you would a dog on a leash. You have to control the flesh by the Holy Spirit. You don't have the Holy Spirit. You don't have power over the flesh. And you have to realize your flesh is not you. Your soul is you. And that's what Jesus came to say. When your body dies, your soul will leave. When we're resurrected, in the resurrection, our bodies will not be resurrected, not our fleshly bodies. We'll have a new body. Our soul goes to be with God. This body goes back to the dust. We're not coming out of the graves in our fleshly body. That is a mistranslation of the Bible and a misinterpretation of the Bible. When Harlan became a new creature, when he was regenerated by the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit was, when Jesus filled him with the Holy Spirit, then he only, he became a new creature and he sought only to do the will of God before the spirit was leading him and guiding him to bring him to this place. But he was not regenerated. He was not doing the will of God, but he was coming to this place. And then after that, after he became a new creature, then he only sought to do the will of God with a fervent hunger, like no one I've ever known. And now when a Holy Spirit person, when a Holy Spirit filled person dies, they no longer sleep in the grave. They go to the light to be with Jesus because they are already a part of his kingdom. We're one with him. God and Jesus come and make their abode in us by the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, when he's in us. The apostle Paul said that God was in a strong delusion because they did not love the truth. And that's true today. They have a strong delusion. They think they are saved and they think they have the Holy Spirit by claiming scriptures when they actually never really come to the living Jesus Christ. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10 through 12, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they might all be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. They take much pleasure in unrighteousness today. God has a way of testing people to see if they truly love him or just pretend to love him. Jesus said that it was not given for many of them to doubt. In Mark 4, verse 11, now scriptures are okay for reference. They're not good for authority or for faith. You don't have to have the scriptures, but I'm just telling you the things that the old saints and people like Jesus were telling you that bear witness of this truth. that was spoken to Harlan and I by the living Jesus Christ today. Jesus didn't quit speaking 2,000 years ago. He's alive today, and he has a living voice today. And he speaks to us by the Spirit, not a 2,000-year-old history book, but he was even speaking some of these truths back then. And since your faith is in this book, I reference some of these old scriptures so that you will know this is true back then and now. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest they should be converted and their sins be forgiven them. Why would God send them a strong delusion? Everybody thinks God wants everybody to be saved. Well, he does. He wants you to be saved, but you, he lets you have a delusion because he's not trying to save your flesh, your mind, your head, your brain. That all goes back to the dust. It's corrupt. He came to save your soul. He sent Jesus to save our inner man, our soul. And if you love God with your heart, then you will know these words are true and you will be attracted 
to the spirit and to the truth and you will want to come to him. But if you just want to be saved out of your mind because you're afraid of going to hell or you've been taught all this Bible stuff, but you're going after the flesh, you know you're going after the flesh, even if you're going to church and singing all these wonderful songs to the, in these preachers meeting that are promising you prosperity here in the flesh and all the desires of your heart. And you're living after it because that's what you want. Actually, you're hypnotized by the devil and you're actually worshiping Lucifer who has transformed himself into an image of Jesus Christ. Jesus, the living Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, will always lead you to spiritual things, the things of the heart, the things of the spirit of God, not after houses and great careers. Now, Jesus knows that you have need of a place to live and food and clothes. And in, in this day and time, you need money. And most people need a spouse. Well, he knows that. And he doesn't condemn you for getting your needs. But you know when you're lusting after the flesh, you're not loving God and the things of God. These things are in your heart. When you die and your spirit leaves, it comes out from your breath of life, it comes out your mouth and goes back to your creator. What you love will be in there, in your soul. And in your soul, if you love the earth and the things of the earth, and you love the Bible, and you love the riches that Bible preachers give you, but you've never really come to the living Jesus Christ, you've never really loved your creator, that will be there. And you'll be saying, well, Lord, you said in your word, well, that wasn't his word to you. And so most of you didn't know, none of you knew this. Satan had sent a God had let Satan send a strong delusion to the world to deceive you because you wanted what he was offering you. He offered Jesus the world if he would bow down and worship him. And Jesus said, no. And it cost Jesus everything. Like it has always cost all the saints of God, everything. We're hated, we're persecuted throughout the ages. And it's a book people, the self-righteous, sanctimonious law claimers that are always persecuting us and burning us and slandering us and hating us and telling us we're devils and they're money mongers they're living after the flesh and they're condemned by this truth they're of lucifer's seed they're enmity with god's seed the holy spirit seed and so they shun us they censor us they don't want this voice to be spoken this truth because they don't want to lose your money that they take up from the Bible and control they have over you with the authority that they claim they have from the Bible. They don't want you to walk and talk with the living Jesus Christ in the spirit and only be controlled by the living God. They want to control you so they can make merchandise of you. Satan wants to control you and he will not let his captives go free and he will persecute you and he will deceive you and he will tempt you. And how does he do it best? was something that if it were possible would deceive the very elect. He took the old writings of God's people and compiled it into an idol, claiming it to be the living word of God to you today, and then taking power over you with this, making you think you're saved when you actually never come to the living Jesus Christ so that you really might have life. Those of you that have a true love for God and truly want them, you'll feel this and you'll know it's the truth. The rest of you, it's not given for you to know because your heart is not good ground. You want the things of the world. You will be earthbound when your spirit leaves your body. You will love the things of the earth. Your spirit will not go to be with Jesus because you don't love him. You don't have his spirit in you. You love the world and you will perish with the world and you will be judged with the world. And all these religions, they're all Bible-based religions, all 45,000 of them. When they invent 2.2 new ones every day from their own mind, some of them, most all of them hold some truth because they get it from reading the old writings that are inc included in the scriptures. But they're, they're never really of the truth. The spirit is truth. The spirit will teach you all things. And knowledge will not save you. Only the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit will save you. Without the Spirit of Christ, you're not of him. And you, we don't live by understanding. We live by faith, which means we do the will of God by the Spirit that he puts in us. If God is in us, then we don't need somebody else to tell us what God's will is from a 2,000-year-old book. God will speak to our hearts right now, and you will know by the Spirit in you. What is God's will for your life and not? And I hope that many of you find this truth so that you can truly be saved 
I love you in Christ. Harlan gave his life for this, and he and I together gave our life in this. And I will continue in this as long as Jesus wants me to. And then I'm going home to be in Jesus' kingdom with Harlan and with the brotherhood. Jesus welcomed me to the brotherhood. And there we will live forever in peace. And the treasures of this world will mean nothing. This world is corrupt. And if you live after it, you're going to be destroyed with it. Thank you.